Hello my friends, it's Ranger Russ at the Meg's Point Nature Center, ready to do another program live from the Nature Center. If you have any questions, you can post them at any time. I also ask that you put up where you're messaging from. I always like to see where we're reaching. You can find out more information about the Nature Center by visiting megspointnaturecenter.org. You can also go to the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection's website to get more information about not only the Meg's Point Nature Center, but other parks and other programs that are done by the uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. So you can learn about things happening at Dinosaur State Park, uh, No Child Left, Behind, Left Inside, um, we also have the Great Backyard Pursuit, which is finished up, but you can still look at all of the fun things that were done there. So today, we've got a really exciting thing to talk about. We are going to be learning about owl pellets. And the first thing we need to do is say, well, what is an owl pellet? Most people know that an owl regurgitates this pellet. But people always think, well, is it vomiting it up? Or they do think that it is being vomited. It's not vomit. The pellet is being regurgitated. It's, it's from the crop. And it's really just undigested materials from what the owl is eating. Typically, they're eating a lot of rodents and things like that. So you're getting a lot of fur and some bones. Owls don't have as much or as strong of an acid for digestion. So the undigested material is packed away into a pellet and then regurgitated. So between one and three are the average pellets produced per evening. So as the owl is eating, it's going to regurgitate these pellets. And again, it's undigested material. So these are things that the owl has been eating. And what do owls eat? Again, mostly rodents, but they will eat other things besides rodents. So, occasionally you can find parts of birds. The owls do eat birds, and you will find the bird bones and sometimes some chunks of feathers that are undigested. You can also occasionally find parts of shrews. Okay? And if you remember our past programs about rodents, rodents have teeth. You can't see these teeth very well, but their teeth are not pointed. They're flat on the bottom, and they are bright orange. So a shrew is not a rodent, although most people consider them. They can't tell the difference, so they just call them rodents. Then we also have moles. Now, I did a program on moles. I love moles. They're super cool. But these are also eaten by owls. And if you want to see that mole program, you can visit megspointnaturecenter.org's virtual learning center or go to the Megs Point Nature Center YouTube page to see our past programs. The mole program was just fascinating. I was really lucky to get a mole to do a program. Okay. The rodents... You can find lots of different rodents, rats, mice, different rodents. Okay, they will eat those. And then finally, the thing that we're probably going to find are voles. Now, voles in Connecticut are not quite as common as mice. So you're going to find a lot more mice parts in Connecticut owl pellets. But the owl pellet that we're going to be dissecting today is from a barn owl, and it's a western barn owl. Barn owls are found all across Connecticut. They're actually found all over the globe. The barn owl in Connecticut is an endangered species. They're really hard to find in Connecticut, but out west, they're one of the most common owls. And the owl pellets that you get online, you can buy these, are usually from the western barn owls, and again, they eat a lot of voles, so that's what we expect to find. Now, when you purchase a owl pellet like this one, they're going to come, they're sterilized, so they heat sterilize them, and then they wrap them up in aluminum foil. And we're going to treat this kind of like we're doing a lab experiment. So we're going to put on our gloves. 
if I can fit them on my hand. All right. I think the first time I did an owl pellet, I was in grade school, probably like fourth or fifth grade. And it was absolutely fascinating to me. We have eight different owls that are found in Connecticut. All the owls produce pellets, but the size of the pellet is going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on the food that they're eating, how much, and the size of the food. And it's also going to depend on how large the owls are. Our screech owls and our sawwit owls, very tiny pellets. When they're first regurgitated, they're very dark because of what's in them. And then as they're exposed to the elements, they're going to change color and they're going to become like a lighter gray color the longer that they're out. When it rains, they're going to disintegrate pretty quickly. So if you're looking for owl pellets, one of the things you want to look for is whitewash. That's the bird droppings on the leaves and on the ground. And then typically that means that that's a roosting place for a bird, not necessarily an owl. And then you search around and if it's a good place for them, you're going to find the pellets on the ground. Okay, I'm just going to check and see if we have any questions so far because I'm going to angle the camera down. I don't see any questions. So we're going to angle the camera down so you can watch. How's that? We're going to dissect the owl pellet. Okay, let's move this ahead a little bit. Okay, so again, we've unwrapped it. That was the aluminum foil that it was in. And I like to put the aluminum foil aside to catch some of the things. And then I have these charts. It's gonna be reversed for you, but we have these charts and we'll, we'll put one of these up online if you wanna do your own owl pellet dissection. Uh, but this is what we use to separate out. So we'll give this, if we do this program for kids, they can put the bones in the different locations as they find them. Now the beginning of an owl pellet dissection is pretty difficult uh, because it's, it's pretty hard packed. Okay, They really pack it in there. So the first thing I like to do is to check the, the owl pellet outside and see if there's any, anything that you can notice. It looks like a bit of grass there. And that's not uncommon. They're eating these rodents in fields or wherever they get them. So occasionally they will get other bits in there. You can see there's a bit of an opening there. That's a good place to start. But I'm going to keep looking, see if there's any other weak points that we can start opening it up. But that looks like a good... Now, I, already there are some bones and awesome... There's a skull, and it's a full skull. You can see, if you look closely, there's the lower jaw right there, and that's the upper jaw. So you've got, and this looks like the back of the skull. So right off the bat, it looks like we've got a full intact skull. You don't often find them. A lot of times the, the jaws are separate from the uh, from each other, the lower jaws, and then separate from the skull, from the top part of the skull. So using tweezers, that's a good idea to get some of the bits and pieces out. Um, I actually have some more pointy ones that we can use. So if you just take your time you can really clean off the skull. That's where the eye would be. That's the orbit right there. So this is really cool. Now, judging by the skull, so I know it's a rodent. It's got the, the orange teeth. like we have a comment somebody says I've done this before so cool can't wait to see what you find I know that's exciting oh so this is really neat up against the skull was a part that is not part of the skull that looks like um, it's 
a little bit too straight to be a rib. I think that is the forelimb that would be right there of a rodent. Uh, so you can see that. That goes right there. Now you learn to identify the bones pretty quickly when you've done this for a while. Um, but with the kids, you really want them to spend the time and try and identify the bones on their own. Again, lots of hair. Uh, hair is one of the things that are a little bit more difficult to digest. So now we've got the one of the lower jaws is separated out. You can see there's a row of teeth there. Very often you'll find those teeth separated out from the skull. They're all very closely packed together and they stay stuck together. So that becomes a tricky thing to identify if you've never seen it before. So, and actually if you look in this picture, that's what the teeth would look like if they're all together. So that's pretty neat. I'm gonna see what else we've got here in this skull. There's the other lower jaw. So you've got each side of the lower jaw. The lower jaws on most mammals are not connected very firmly, so they separate pretty easily. And then in the skull here, all right, and then you can see there's two rows of teeth right there. The spine would attach in the back right here. So you might find vertebrae as well. And if you look, this is the skull plates that are stitched together. It's called stitching in the skull when the bones connect to each other. Um, but that plate is missing. But that is a skull. And we can spend more time cleaning that up. But let's get into see if there's anything else in this skull that, I mean, in this pellet that jumps out. Now, occasionally I have found bird beaks. Um, it was actually a cardinal beak, which was pretty neat. Another leg bone there. There we go, one of those. And then another skull. So this is the upper jaw, you can see those teeth. Now this skull, this is a common thing that happens with the skulls. It's missing the entire back portion of the skull. Okay, but that is another skull. So already we've got two skulls. So this owl in one night has eaten two, um, two rodents. And the pellets are produced in the night. They don't keep them during the day and, and then regurgitate them at the end of a the day. They regurgitate them as the night is going on. So here's a really cool bone. I don't know if you can see. It's, it's three bones that are connected together like that. And that's part of the hip. So we can put that right there. Here's another, looks like foreleg. There's a really tiny one. Let's put that over there. I'm not sure what that one is yet. Sometimes the pellet, this one's coming apart pretty easily. You want to be careful that you don't break the bones as it comes apart. Now look at this. These two bones are connect, are, they are staying connected. There you go. How cool is that? The small bone coming right off of the big bone. And that is part of the hind leg right there. So you can see how perfectly they're matching up to the bones that we're finding here. Now here I have found, this is, yes it is, another skull. How interesting is this? So now we've got three skulls. So this 
particular owl, and this is a pretty large pellet for, for a barn owl, um, has eaten three rodents. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell how exciting this is for me. There's another piece of a hip. So because we have three skulls, we could expect to find, you know, lots of hips. We could find six hips. Um, there's another hip. Oh, Got to be careful. I'm blowing the, uh, the light stuff all over the place as I go. All right, let's see what else. Here's another foreleg or hind leg. Sorry. What is this possible? There's another. Uh, this might be the back part of one of those skulls. Yep. There's the back plate because both of those skulls are missing. And see that? That is the bony plate of the skull that would be stitched together. So that could fit right in that spot. And that's where those would be. Part of the skull. I haven't found any vertebrae yet, which is a little bit surprising. They're small, but usually in these little bits, if you, if you start to roll your fingers through when you, when you think you're all done with the fur, feel around to see if there are any hard bits in there. Um, and then you'll be able to sometimes pull out another um, a vertebrae. Or two. There's another hind leg. All right, so already we've got three skulls, got some hind legs. The smaller bones uh, digest a little bit easier than the larger ones, so you don't find very many of those. And again, these are, these are Western owls. There's a lower jaw. So that could be a lower jaw from one of those two jaws there. The Western owls eat a lot of voles. That is their, their main food source. And when, when I say Western owls, um, most of these are coming from Indiana, Montana, out in that area. And out in the prairies and the plains, you get a lot of voles. In the Rocky Mountains. The barn owls are very adaptable. They live in, in almost every habitat. Let's see what else. What is this? A shoulder blade. Cool. This is so cool. So that's the shoulder right there. Look at how well the um, images are matching what we're finding. That's really helpful when you're doing this to have a good uh, guide that matches it up. Now some of the smaller owls like uh, screech owls and sawwood owls will eat insects and sometimes you will find bits of the exoskeleton uh, from an insect. I don't know if you guys can see the parts that I've already gone through. There are still a lot of bones mixed in here. So as you do this, there's always a chance to find something, you know, if you go through these other bones. And again, this is not uh, owl vomit. This is just a, a regurgitation, an owl pellet. In, uh, in falconry, they call it a casting. And they actually will feed if, if they've got a, a falcon. It's a, falconry would be a captive uh, hawk or a falcon. Um, and they will feed them special food to get them to clear out their 
their crop to create a nice casting. So here is another part of a hind leg. That's the upper portion of the hind leg. Again, you can put up your questions or comments at any time. I just found a rib and I dropped it, so we'll, we'll have to find that again. And here's another lower jaw. Those lower jaws just, just stand right out, any of the jaw, because of those bright orange teeth. Again, rodents have iron in their teeth, which makes them appear orange. It's a really easy way to tell a rodent from any other skull. A rabbit, for example, they are a lagomorph, not a rodent, so they will have white teeth like all the other animals that are not rodents. And here we have another part of the rear leg. So we're getting lots of rear legs. Now, you don't often, again, you're not going to find the very, very small bones um, of the legs. Uh, ribs are hard to find, but the larger bones, especially the skulls and the larger leg bones, those are going to show up much more often. So here we're getting into a piece that's pretty solid in here. This looks like that's that part of the leg right there. It's pretty solid, so you want to be really careful as we separate this out that, you again, you don't break any of the bones. Uh, here's a nice big rear bone. So that would be like our femur right there. And then these would be the uh, tibia and fibia bones. And then this would be your radius, ulna. Um, I'm trying to remember. This goes back to college anatomy. Oh, there's a, another part of the jaw. Here's another hind leg. The hind legs are really popping out now. Uh-oh, look at that. This is the coolest thing. If you look right there, there are two teeth right up close together. That could be another skull. Is it possible that this particular barn owl ate three rodents in one night. Now these are probably, I was talking, yes, this is another skull. So this makes four. Four. This is a good hunting. Oh, look at all those bones. There's a bunch of leg bones in there. So I see a question, is this a typical appetite for this size owl? So the barn owl is a medium to large size owl. Um, and they do eat a lot of rodents. I would say this is, this is a good hunt uh, for a barn owl for a night. This is like an entire night's worth of hunting, but it's all in one pellet. So typically, you know, they would have two pellets for this many skulls. So that's four definite. And these are not, so these are not large. The vole, the western vole that we often find is a, has a much larger skull. Uh, these are flat. These are, could be just mice, maybe not voles. Um, but yes, this is a very good hunting owl. All right, here's another bony plate from the skull. 
Let's move these lower jaws down to here. So those two might go together, these two go together. This is definitely a larger, uh, this is more mouse, that could be a vole. So this bigger one could be a vole. The vole skull and the mouse skull are really quite similar. If, you, if they were intact and you could hold them side by side, you might be able to tell. And again, I haven't found any vertebrae. I would love to be able to show you a vertebrae. What have we here? Oh, uh, nope. All right, there are leg bones all through here. Lots of leg bones have come out of this pellet. All right, if we continue doing this, there's another lower jaw. If we continue doing this, we would find a lot more um, of the same, probably. I, I would hope that eventually I would find a, a vertebrae. Now, here's something. Maybe this is just a lot packed together, but this, there's another hind leg. There's a lot of bones in a tight little mass right here. Now, because the owl are, is producing multiple pellets a night, that's why sometimes you could find a part of one uh, animal in a couple of different pellets. It's not necessarily going to be all in the same pellet, although that's pretty likely. Here's a really cool thing. This is the pelvis. And it looks more like the pelvis of a mole uh, than the pelvis of a rodent. All right, somehow I missed. There's another lower jaw. Let's see if we have any other questions. What has happened to the missing bones? So again, some of the missing bones could be in another pellet, and some of the bones could be digested and, and pass right through the bird. So their acids aren't strong enough to digest all the bones, but some of the bones, um, some of the smaller bones especially, can be digested. And then again, there will be other pellets that will come out as well. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. We can do a wrap up now. And I'm surprised nobody is saying that this is a gross experiment or anything. Very often when we start doing this program, people, people are a bit grossed out by the fact that they're taking apart regurgitation and there's bones and different bits in there. So pretty cool. I hope that everybody enjoyed this. We're going to continue to do these programs uh, at 11 o'clock Tuesday to Friday. This Friday is a holiday, so I won't be coming to the Nature Center. I'm going to try and do an, a program, though. Uh, I'm not sure where I'll do it. Maybe I'll go to Chatfield Hollow again. It's been a while since I've been there. Maybe I'll take a, a kayak out and do a program from there. But you can look for programs at 11 o'clock, typically Tuesday to Friday. Some special programs are in the works for our YouTube channel, so look for those. And other than that, I hope that everybody is enjoying these programs, and I will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock for something different. Never know what it's going to be.